Today we're going to be looking at Vultures by John Mayer, the live performance from the Where the Light Is DVD. It's all done with the fingers. Now pick the pickup selectors in the second last position on your typical Strat. And if you're familiar with the F-sharp minor pentatonic position, then you'll be intimately familiar with the notes used in this song. It's all above the 12th fret. It's either the F-sharp minor pentatonic or the major pentatonic, F-sharp major. I'll be using on-screen tab throughout the video. If you ever want to see what measure number you're on, the number is usually in the upper left corner. These are bends, pretty self-explanatory. These are rest symbols, indicating a pause between note values. This is a vibrato symbol, meaning we're going to shake the note a bit for some natural vibrato. And the arrows show the direction, either upstroke or downstroke. This is a downstroke. Downstroke with a bunch of X's indicates a muted downstroke. These can be up or down as well. Notes with an X and an S above the staff indicate a slap. This is played with the thumb usually on the A or E strings. Notes in angle brackets are harmonics. I believe there's only one throughout the whole song. Other times you'll find notes in parentheses and these can indicate two things. A tie note is in this case. That means this note was played in the last measure and is ringing into the next measure. Or it can be a note that's simply not played as hard as the surrounding notes. In this case, this note is just played softer than the others. For the complicated rhythmic passages, a T indicates a muted finger upstroke where a slap is gonna be with the thumb and the pops are always usually with the thumbs. So let's get started in on the intro and verse. So the Vulture's intro riff spans two measures and is repeated four times in the intro in the non-singing portion. And it sounds like this. And that's uh, measure one and measure two together. And that's repeated four times with one variation near the end that I'll get into. So right off the top, Taking our first finger, we're barring it across the A string and D string at the 14th fret. We're doing a slow bend, like that. And then we're coming with our third finger, barring the same two strings at the 16th fret, and striking them with a slap flick. And by slap flick, I mean my thumb and my first finger is tucked underneath. It's going to hit the strings, and the first finger is going to shoot out and hit the fretted strings while the thumb impacts around the bass note in a percussive thump. So we get a thunk at the same time we get some note sound. For plucking, I'm plucking with my thumb and first finger, those notes at the 14th fret. And after that, my thumb is on the A16 and I pluck that once and move to this chord. That high chord is the second finger on the D14 and the first finger on the G13. And I give that some vibrato. And I pluck that with the first two fingers because they're hooked under the strings, the two middle strings here, the D and the G. Everything fits really nice when you keep your hand in the good spot. And then we're going to do another slap flick on the 16th fret bar, but this time we're going to include that G16 note to give it a higher effect. And uh, that kind of gives this phantom little melody. Just including those higher notes. So the first slap flick is the lower notes here. And then the next one includes three notes being slap flucked. <laughs> Sounds dirty. And gives a kind of higher, higher ring to it. Then we uh, go back to our A16 bass note. So the whole thing's slow. Like that. Measure two starts with a percussive thump at the beginning. And then a quicker bend at the 14th fret. And then as you see, we hit this high chord twice, so. Let's just cycle those two slow. First measure. So I try to stay low on the first slap flick and then higher on the second one. Don't forget the vibrato. And on that high chord, we pluck the first one, no vibrato, but the second one we kind of bend up a bit. So, focusing on measure two. Bend 
it up, and then start over again. So those two measures are the main Vulture's riff throughout, but in measure six he throws in something a bit different. So let's take it from measure five and pay attention in measure six what happens. I did a little pedal on the bass, between the bass note at A16 and the high chord, bend it up, and go like that. And that's a nice little thing. He's very stingy with it. It only appears twice in the song, but I tend to throw it in near the endings of these things. So what he's doing there is we start with a thump, the quick bend at the 14th fret here. So off of the bass note of the A16, the high chord, Go right back to the A16, and then back to the high chord, this time bend it up a bit, slowly, and then in the slap flick at the barred 16th fret, and then off with the A16. Let's do that in context from measure 5. So don't forget that bend, like that. And one common thing you can kind of take away from this is the first measure always starts with a long, slow bend, double bend on the 14th fret. And the second subsequent measure always starts with a slap and then the quicker bend at the 14th fret. So the first measure is like... And then the second subsequent measure is... Changes up the rhythm a bit. And that kind of leads to this other discussion of the accents and the thumps and the slap flicks. There's accents on two and four and also one, two and four. And what I mean by that is I'll just show you. Everywhere there's a thump or a slap flick, consider that an accent. And your hand, in order to keep kind of a connection to the song, we'll get into this kind of thing. doing this. It's either doing it in two, four. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So there's accents on two and four and one, two, and four in the second measure. So keep that in mind. It's kind of a neat thing. And sometimes on the slap flicks, he's not even sounding notes. He turns it into a so here's where I sound the notes. Here's where I don't sound them. Sounds equally good. And when he's on autopilot doing this, this is what you'll hear later on in the song. And that is it for the intro. Let's look at the verse now. the singing portion of the verse in the non-singing intro is that he only does that long slow double bend on the 14th fret once at the very beginning of each verse. After that he replaces it with a thump similar to what you get in the second measure. Right here, thump. Vibrato. So that just allows him to do, just think of it as uh, Accents on one, two, and four. That's kind of what why he's doing it. That way he can start everything with a like this. Another thing that you'll see is he's not very consistent. In the intro, he was going back and forth between this vibrato single kind of use of the of the high chord to the double bend. Sometimes in the singing portions of the verse he just repeats one of those several times in a row like and more often than not it's this one. So there's no rhyme or reason. I tried to do the first pass with the vibrato version of it and then alternate with the finishing off with the bend one. 
that's the main difference. So I'm just going to do the first four measures of verse 1 so you can kind of see the difference starting with the slow bend and then every measure after that starting with a thump. Some of us we hardly ever hear The rest of us just won't disappear So it just is a subtle thing but it really makes the timing kind of cool. Like some of us, and he doesn't even sing when he starts that bend. He does the slow bend. Some of us, we hardly ever hear the rest of us. So it might be a vocal consideration that led to the changing of the, of the timing of that and starting with the thump. It's always nice to keep on beat and keep your connection to the song with the constant thumping. Chorus can also be thought of in two measure increments that are repeated to form a riff. And the first part of that in the chorus we've heard before. But the second part, accenting the off beats between these thumps, we have this thump, 14th fret bend, thump, A16, thump, the high chord bend, thump back the A16. So we have this thing as the second measure in each of those groups. Let's just go through with a vocal track to kind of put ourselves in context. Down to the wire, I wanted water, but I want to the fire. And this is what it takes to take me even higher. And I'll come to like I do when the world keeps testing me, testing me, testing me. And then we end off with a little pentatonic run-up to get into solo one. So, a couple things. Uh, we maintain this long bend intro, just like in the verse. We start off with a long bend. This new part we talked about. And then he throws in another long bend. back to that thing he does before he starts off he ditches the long 14th fret bend and goes into a slap and that vocal is take me higher. and it just fits with the uh, just fits with the rhythm of the, uh, the the vocals there and then near the end he's doing this so we're pedaling we're doing a thump and then a bend on the high chord to the a16 There's four of these scattered throughout the measures before we go to the and we're gonna take that up in solo one. So that's all I'm going to show you with regards to the verses and the choruses. All the ones to follow are based upon the information that I've just shown you and you can change it up here and there as he improvises his way through it as you see fit. The tab contains all the details if you want to pursue it like that. solos. There's three solos and they get longer as they go along, but the first one's pretty short and starts as a pickup measure off the first chorus. Sounds like this. So we're starting the uh, last measure of the chorus and we do this little slide from A14 to A16 pick from D14 to 16, and then do this first finger index bend, it's kind of fun, on the G14. And it's a full bend and we hold it for quite a while. And then it starts the next measure. And the next measure has this ringing, and we get back into the riff. And we kind of start that riff off by the slap flick on the barred 16. end that off with a slide from the A16 down. Then we come back up into the next measure with some... So we're sliding several slides from the A14 to 16 and then come back up back to that first index finger bend. We're doing two fulls 
and then just a vibrato version of the single note itself. Then we have a little pop mute here, going into the high chord, and then a pull off hammer on, and then to the A16, and then a. And that last part is just a uh, hammer on, but it's barred from the 14th fret on the A and D to the 16, and then a muted pop. And then into that lick again. So let's do that all slow. And that's that solo one. This is probably a good time to mention that because he's using his fingers, you get some really nice overtones. As you're picking with your thumb, um, the flesh around it stops the string from vibrating, and you get these overtones. So throughout the solos, you're going to hear this, and you can actually affect some of it if you want. So instead of going, which is the nail, If you go on the edge of your thumb, you can get some really wicked overtone. Very cool. It's a benefit of playing with your fingers. So that was solo one. Solo two gets started off of chorus two and is an interesting timing thing on the chorus part that I'll just demonstrate. So we'll do the last two measures of chorus two and the first two measures of solo two. This is the testing me, testing me vocal. Testing me, testing me. And that's four measures. We'll stop there, keep it bite-sized. So we've seen this part. Here's where it gets different. Out of nowhere, really quickly, we snatch this barred 16th fret A, D, and G, and then we pause for a bit, and we let that measure end out, and then a pause to start the next measure, and then we do this. These two bends. So my third finger is on the G16, I bend it up three quarters, not quite a full step, but more than a half. Somewhere around the 17 and a half fret. And then the second finger is there to do something similar to the 15th, but it's only a quarter bend. So they should be just out of reach of where your ear wants to resolve them to, which makes it very interesting and bluesy. And then these are the notes we play. You can check the tab for where they are. And a lot of heavy vibrato on all the notes on the D string. One more time. And that last bit is a uh, rebend. And right after that, we have this slap and then an incidental harmonic on the A12, which is accidental, but I throw it in all the time. So coming off of that. So starting from that harmonic part, slap harmonic, high chord. So we've seen that bit before. And again, we're in the context of the riff, he's soloing in between. Then we have this uh, G16, and then high, and then the low part. Then we're bending from the G16 again with our pinky ready on the B17. And then a bunch of pre-bends, but pulling them down. And then G. And that's how that ends off. Let's do that whole thing slow from the harmonic. Going into measure 51 off that last part. Start 
starts like this. And then the high chord. And then this lick. And all that is is a bend from the G16 and return to the original pitch of the 16th fret and then pull off to the G14 and then hit the D16. There's a couple of E's in this. Then we do some neat stuff on the B string. So coming off that lick, we're fretting the B14, we hit it again, and then we fret B17, hit it unbent, bend it up a half step, and then a full step, and then pull out of it. After that we do a quick, quick bend on the B17, and then come down to this. So that's the two notes on the 14th fret barred, and then the 16th, and then the bass note on the 16th, and then the high chord, and then that lick again. Now we do a different chord. This time we're, our pinky is on the 17th fret, the two bottom strings, and we're barring with the first finger the 14th fret almost all the way down. And we do this. Like that. So the first chord is like this, and then we hit the bass notes on the 14th fret, and then we take our third finger and we put it on the 16th fret of the G, and we get this sounding. So it's like that. And then we have a muted thunk and then the high chord, and then the lick again. Let's do that last bit again. It almost feels like you want to do a bass note A16 in there, but it's muted on the track, so I think he missed it. But you can play it like that if you want. So let's play that from the top. Continuing with measure 55 on. And that leads us into the next verse where he's not playing guitar, he's doing the wheels up thing. So off the top we have that same kind of chordy thing we did before this time, it's a bit simplified. We're barring the 14th fret from the D down, and then just the two middle strings at the 14th fret, and then up to the 16th fret, same two strings, and then the bass note at A16, and then the high chord. Then he does, so what he's doing there is he's got the thumb, he's gonna do a muted pop on the D14, He's going to play uh, with, I use my second finger, the B17. And then we do uh, an interesting thing. We do an upstroke muted pop with our first finger on the G string, muted. And then we come down with a little slap on the D string with our thumb. And then we're all poised to play the next note, which is the D14. And then we do a little chord thing here. And that chord is uh, third finger on B16 and first finger on G14. And then the next one we just lift off basically and just hit the notes at the 14th fret. So slow that's. And within context of the lick, it's. Like that. Let me do that one more time slow. And the trick there is that little upstroke pop. That's one of the mysteries of John Mayer. So he's doing a, a muted thumb pop like that, and then the 17th fret, and then the first finger will do the upstroke pop. I've notated this with a T in the tab. And then, kind of like tap, there's nothing else to use. Then the thumb comes down, slaps that D string, plays the note on the D string, and then we do the little chord out, like that. So from the top, Sometimes I do the muted upstroke with the two fingers, 
like that. So on to the next part. We have uh, a traditional slap, pop, and then we're doing the high chord. That's the next part. So you do a slap on the D with our thumb. With our thumb we pop that, mute it like that. And then with our thumb and first finger we pluck that high chord. And then we have another little pop and we're going to do a bar on the two middle strings on the 16th. Then we're going to play the G14 by itself with the first finger and then the thumb is going to play the D16 like that. Then we're going to do a little muted pop and we're going to pluck the barred 14th fret from the D14 all the way down three strings. And then we have this nice So we're barring the 16th fret on the G and B strings, and we kind of play it, bend it up, hit it unbent, and then hit the revert back to the 14th fret notes. So let's just do that slow. singing, he's just holding the guitar in a meaningful manner. So that old, uh, new bit here, starting at the 17th fret of the B, and we have a muted pop on the D, and then our chord, pull off from B16 to 14, then a slap pop chord twice, another slap pop on the D, and then we have a note from the G16 to the G14. Sounds like this. So the, we're back to the regular slap popping John Mayer rhythmic thing. So what we're doing here is we're slapping on the D, popping off the D, and then coming right back with our thumb and first finger to pop that chord twice. Another slap pop. That kind of thing. It's more traditional than that uh, one we saw last measure. So that whole measure slow again. descending, we're going da, 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 da. into the next bit we continue that rhythmic thing where we do a slap pop in the next measure twice on that chord again, another slap pop, this time we do a hammer on, we bar the two middle strings at the 14th fret and we hammer on to the D16 and then play the, uh, the root notes like that, another slap pop, this time on the A string because we're descending a bit, we're going to play this chord that's how we're ending off. So that chord is, I'll just call it out, third finger on the A16, and then we're barring the two notes under that on the 14th fret. So we're gonna pop that note, like that chord, a little muted pop, and then we're pulling off from the A15 to the A14, and then the E17 to the E14, and then throwing in some open strings, the open A and D at the same time to end that off. Let's play that bit slow. going into the lick it again. So let's play those last two bits slow with the 17th starting at the 17th fret thing. Like that. Then we're ending off with a slide out. And then a down up on the barred 16th fret, and then a chunk at the end. And that is the end of solo two. One additional note coming out of solo two, he starts verse three without guitar playing. He's just kind of holding it and singing with a lot of expression and stuff. Uh, the wheels up lyric starts that off, and he sings a couple bars without guitar before he gets to that uh, off on my trail. Made. And, he, and he starts singing again there, but he gets into the verse again with a really neat How do I get these buzzers off of my trail? That's all he does. He does a bend at the 14th fret, 
up and then a smack and then the 16th fret bar and then he goes into the regular stuff. It's a, it's a neat technique, uh, a guitarless verse, or at least halfway through. So it's something to see would make note of. Solo 3 begins in measure 85. And we've clicked on overdrive, we've got a nice warm overdrive sound, kind of fuzzy. And this is the part where he's singing and playing back and forth. He's going, give up, give up, so it's between uh, him singing and the vocal parts. That's why you'll see some long pauses in the music. So let's do the first two bars of that. So that's between he's uh, he's singing the first bit and then he plays some lead then he sings plays some lead like that. So it starts with the regular rhythm and then a bit of a pause before we go into this sequence. Like that. So those are That's one of those nice index finger bends and vibrato. We have a couple of pull-offs. That's a big jump all the way to the E17, like that. A muted pluck, and we have a little bar at A14 to D14, like that, ending with an upstroke pluck. And the reason we're ending with that upstroke thumb is because the very next note will be a slap and these chords, like that. So the next measure starts with a slap, and then we do a down strum on A14, D14, and then an upstroke on B16 and G16. So low, high. Then we wait quite a bit before it goes into this. Like that. So after the chord, we wait a little bit, and then we go to end off the measure with this bend at B16. And with that still ringing, we do a couple of pull-offs. Ending with thumb kind of downstrokes. Like that. So that part is like this. End of the measure has it bent up. Into the next measure it's already ringing, so then we start our little pull-offs. That's the first one. The next one is a double pull-off from the two middle strings at the 16th fret to the 14th fret. Down. Let's do that slow. Continuing into measure 89. So we're getting, beginning with the riff again. This time the timing is. If we're going into this. doing there is we're starting at the tail end of the measure 89 we're doing um, we have basically got my third finger on the B 16 and then my first finger is barring the D 14 on down and I got my thumb on the D string and my other two fingers tucked into there and I can pluck all of them pretty much plucking all of them if you uh, as you're bouncing this though and you're easing up on it sometimes you only get the outside ones to sound and this is what you're hearing on the track so enough of that let's just do it a couple times slow so we're starting off with thumb on the D14 and then we're plucking the whole thing and then there's an open D in there as he's bouncing it he's lifting off so it deadens it so you sometimes get this open string and then the very next measure measure 90 starts like this That. So let's take it from measure 90. So we've got that chord shape. We're going to pluck it twice, all three notes. We're going to do a little pop and then one snatch of the notes, another pop, another two snatches of the notes, a slap, a pop, and then we're going to reverse the shape. We're going to take our third finger, put it on the D16, and then the first finger is going to bar the B14 and the G14. And we're going to hit that. And then we're going to do a little pop, and then we're going to do a bar on the two middle strings, 16th fret, and then bring that down to the two middle strings, 14th fret, 
and then a quick little down, up, muted. So taken from the, the tail end of 89, it sounds like this. Like that. One more time, slow. To finish off the measures with the overdrive effect clicked on, we have measures 91 and 92, and they're simply... Like that. So that's measure 91 is opening with the thumb hitting the E14, and then I got my first finger barring the two middle strings of the 14th fret, and I do a slap and a little muted pop for me the high chord, a lot of vibrato, and then a slap stop it, and then we wait. And he does, that's when he does that final vocal, now don't you dare now, or something like that. And as he sings that, he goes, like that, like that. So that's the first finger barring the D14, and the one below it, and then our third finger on the B16. And it's down, muted down, uh, press down up, muted down up, and then press down, so. So we're only, we're playing three mutes and three chords. Chord, mute, chord, mute, mute, chord, like that. So in context. And then you click your overdrive off and you're continuing with the solo. Now with our clean sound, we're going to measure 93, 94, sounds like this. that so we do our regular riff this time ending with a slide down like that and we start the next measure with a slap like that so we're doing those chords again we're starting with the slap bend 14 slap flick on the 16 then we have a little pop on the D muted pop and then that chord with the B16 is the high high note. Then we have an open, we're basically trying to pop the D string, but in this case it's open on the track, so I'll notate it as open. Then we switch our fingers up, so now the highest note is now the B14, and then the lowest note is the D16. We do that once, and then we do the open D again, and then we just fold down with the third finger on the two middle strings at the 16th fret. And then our first finger bends up the G14 just a little bit. Then we go back to that bar on the 16, two mill strings. And we have one little pop after that. So let's take it from that measure 94. Like that. So it's 16 chord, open, 14 chord, open, and then this and a little pop. And he does this. So what we're doing there that's different is he's doing that 14th fret bend to the 16th fret lick uh, string down. So he's starting it on the D14 and the G14. He's going and then the slap flick is at the 16th fret and the two middle strings and then it returns to normal. That's a nice change. Instead of going he's going so after that, it's the A14, A16, and then the high chord, and then we come back to the uh, A string and D string at the 16th fret, and then we do a slap, an open A, and then we bar the 14th fret to the 16th fret, the uh, two strings, the A and the D. So it's... That's, that uh, use, use of the open A string and the run up is very neat. Then he does a really neat thing. We have a slap, a pop, let's just play it. He has a slap on the D string, then he pops that D14. This is the chord we're doing. We're taking our first finger, barring the D14 all the way down, and then our pinky is on the B17. So we have an octave and, and this note on the G string. He slaps that, he pops the 14th fret here at the D, and then he takes his two fingers and he pulls these two notes, and then we pop that low note again, 
And then we just bar the 16th fret on the G and B string. And then we pluck the 14th fret so it's like that. And then we do a really fast run. We do a little pop and it's So the ending of that part is the two middle strings of the 16th fret and then the same thing on the 14th fret and then a pull off from on the D string from 16 to 14 and then landing on the A16 and then repeating that pull off again on the D string and then immediately leaping over to the E17 and then the ending on the E14. The way I approach the picking for this is using my thumb and first finger for the middle part here. And then I use my thumb for the first pull off. And then I use my finger for the second pull off. And then my thumb for the last part. Let's just do that slow from the top. Vision 97 has this coming into some of the chickadee chunks. These are some of my favorite John Mayer isms. Let's play the first two measures from 97 on. So we're starting with a slap, um, a pop, and then we're barring the D14 all the way down. So we're snatching that. Then we're doing that thing with the muted upstroke with our two fingers, muted upstroke, come back down with a slap on the D, and then pop that muted D, and then we're going to do the variation of that chord. We're going to take our third finger, put it on the B16, and then we're going to flip our third finger up on the D16, and then we're going to have a slap, a pop, and then we're going to hit this. Now what I hear on the track is the first finger on the E14 and then the third finger barring the D16 on down. But I almost never get that high thing. So if you can, just go from the D16, G16, B16, and that'll be enough. <laughs> and then we do that high chord that I refer to, vibrato. And then we're doing two notes on the A16 and D16. So slow once again. So draw attention to the fact that we're doing a combination of some of these muted plucking techniques. We're doing the slap pop, and then we're doing the finger upstroke pop, followed by the slap and then the pop, thumb pop. So finger pop, like that, and then there's the slap pop. So we've got the slap pop, and then the finger, we have the finger up slap pop. And in context, so the measure after that, uh, very similar, they're all very similar with slight little variations. We have a slap, an open D, that same chord again, the uh, 14th fret from the D on down, another finger upstroke, slap, pop, and then that chord with the third finger on the B16, and then we take it off the B16, so we're just doing the 14th fret bar, then we have a slap, pop, and then we go to the D16, and then that high chord again, vibrato it, and then ending off with the two notes at the 16th fret, like that. So that second measure one more time, slow. And the difference between those two measures is the beginning is the same. But the first one goes with that high chord. The second one goes with a a single note on the D16 and ends like that. So they're very similar. Once you make up the differences, it's easy to remember. Let's do both of those back to back slow. Since 
so we went over the last two measures in a lot of detail. I'm just going to play through these ones slow because they're, they're similar to what we've seen. So we're switching in there uh, that chord. We're, we're barring the D14 and our third finger is on the B16. We're switching that up by lifting off the B16 and pressing down on the D16. So you get this. And we'll be a lot more of that coming up. One more time, slow measures, 99 and 100. As I said before, I tend to look at the endings of these parts and separate them like that. And measure 99 ends like... So we have this first finger on the D14, third finger on the G16, and then we go back to that chord we're familiar with, and then 16th fret 2 note are up here. And then measure 100 is a bit different, it ends like this. Because it sets us up for a whole totally different rhythm coming in. So if you come straight on the endings and the you can kind of separate those past four measures that are pretty similar, just differ in the endings. Measures 101 and 102 completely change up the rhythm. What we're doing there is five chords off the top. And I differentiate them by their shapes. So again, I use just some visual tricks to remember the chord shapes. I think of this one as my third finger is down low and like an L shape facing you. This one is okay, I always remember that. And then the other one is the third finger is up high with an L shape facing me. And then the other stuff is easy enough to remember. So that first one is barring from the D14 all the way down, third finger on the B16. And then the next one is the one we're always the go-to one. And then the other one is barring the D14 all the way down, but our third finger is now up on the A16. So it's... And you might want to practice this so you can get them fast. And I'm picking everything with my thumb and first two fingers. So it's... Then we get into some of the percussive stuff. We're going to do a slap pop on the D, and then this chord, and then end it off with the double sixteens up here. And then slap pop, and then that opening one again. So it's... Ending off with a pop. And then the next measure after that starts off similarly. We have the... But we have a little lead in kind of pop and then we're doing this instead the first finger is on the a14 and then the third finger is on the d16 now we have another uh pop and we're doing this variation of the chord with the b16 as the high note and then we switch the fingers up so now the d16 is the high note now we have a slap pop the go-to two note chord and then the double 16s up here and then slap, pop, that last chord again with the B16 high. And then one last pop. Let's do those two slow. Measures 103 and 104 are the last measures that feature the band in the track. Sounds like this. We're just flipping between two chords, and so that's the one where we have the third finger on the B16 with the uh, bar, first finger bar from the D14 down, and then we take that third finger and lay it down on the D16, kind of turn the chord upside down, alternating between these guys with the all the rhythmic tricks we've seen. We have the muted up stroke, slap, pop, and then just the slap pops. So let's do those two measures slow. One difference here is at the very last measure, we don't do the last switch to the 
And the B16, we just keep on that like that. One more time. And there's one upstroke slap pop, and the other one is just a slap pop, but I occasionally throw it in just because, uh, yeah, I make the mistake to make them too similar. So that's the last bit we have before going into the crazy um, banana, purple, out of this world, monkey dishwasher outro solo that everyone always talks about, and that took me like a full week to transcribe. Full week. It's like endless sleepless nights. <laughs> It was ridiculous. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I go, is it this? Maybe it's this. Turns out it was something else. I don't know. Am I going crazy? Who knows? What do you mean? Now we're coming to the ending of the song. This is what I'm calling the outro. This is the part of the song where the band stops playing, or the bass player stops playing. The drummer's just doing timekeeping on the hi-hat. John Mayer is playing solo, which everyone talks about, and it's probably the hardest part of the song. It begins at measure 105 and goes to 108, and we'll be looking at that now. <laughs> So those are among the hardest measures in the song and definitely the hardest part of the entire song to figure out. What we're doing is a series of four measures that all begin with a bent E5 chord. So we have an octave, we have a low E and a high E and then a fifth in the middle of that. One, two, three, four, five. We're basically just taking that chord shape and bending it up like that. And then we're barring with the first finger on the 14th fret, bottom three strings. I'm doing that. So let's cycle through this and we'll add a little bit each time. Like that. And I'm using my three fingers to pluck, not the thumb at this point. So I use the fingers and then move them down a string and use them for the high part. After that we add this. Like that. That part is with the thumb, I'm doing a little muted pluck on the D string. And then I'm doing this shape and then the shape at the 16th fret, two middle strings. So it's like this. Then we're adding the most difficult part, that is the percussive bit, and that sounds like this. Like that. But it's very fast, and it's four notes, not three. Let's just repeat that with the percussive bit, slowly. We'll loop it a couple times. So what's going on there? Well, I originally thought it was a triplet. And John Mayer triplets are very similar in amongst all his songs in his catalog where he just slaps the top bass note and then drags his thumb off it and then drags his thumb off the bottom one in a rake. So it's slap, rake, rake, slap, triplet, 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 triplet. But this is a four note percussive trick and it's the first time I've ever seen him do this. It also has a very uh, prominent open D pop. So what he's doing there is this. Uh, let's just get our fingers. It's important to have the fingers where they're going to be when you're playing it live to get the muting and everything. That's what we have. You'll notice that I lift my hands off for the D. And the fingers we're using for this is we start with the thumb on the A string. We pop it muted very quickly and then follow it up with an open D. And then the thumb goes up to the E and just falls off it. It doesn't slap it, it falls off it in a muted pluck, and then it falls off the A in the same muted pluck. And for this percussive lick to work, it really banks off the fact that the finger and the thumb are opposed to each other. So those first two notes can be fast because thumb, finger, thumb, thumb. So thumb on the A, first finger on the open D, and then the thumb coming back up to do the top two bass strings. So it's the opposability of these two digits that give us that speed. So it's thumb, finger, thumb, thumb. As you're going uh, at hyper speed when you're trying to execute this lick, some of the pre uh, preceding notes on the D string are such that you can actually pull off like that. 
and aid the ringing of the D, and it's something that'll happen naturally. So uh, just go with the flow if you see that happening. So let's go over that one more time. We'll loop it a couple times. So that's something that you can practice on your own to get it up to speed. It's a tough thing and it's a brand new one. I've never heard him do it in any other song than this one. And it is four notes, two, three, four. And the rhythm of it is very strange. You gotta hit that first note as fast as you can and follow it up with the next one. And then slow down. So you start very fast and slow down like that. Like that. So let's add another part to that, and we're still on measure 105. After that, he does this. So you notice there's a slap now being introduced to make things more complicated. One more time. So that part just has the two middle strings fretted at the 16th fret, a little percussive pop on the D, muted, and then same thing at the 14th fret, and then we have the D16 by itself, and then a slap, and then the D14 by itself. So, and be sure to get that slap in, because a slap appears in every other measure to follow of this grouping of four, and it's easy to leave it out when you're going at hyperspeed. Let's do that a couple times. And then to end it off, we just do the percussive thing again. The A, D, E, A thing. So all together slow, measure 105. One thing you can do when you're getting this thing up to speed to play it is only play it as fast as you can and execute cleanly at the same time. So don't uh, play it so fast that you're making mistakes all over the place. There is value in that, and I'll get to that in a little bit. So, if this is your top speed... And it is sometimes harder to play faster than slow, uh, as odd as that may sound. So, this song is about 101 beats per minute, give or take in a live version. So, you can start at 60 beats per minute, get a metronome. That's when you're learning the muscle memory, getting everything in there so your, your fingers can do it on autopilot. And just take it up a couple notches. Practice with a metronome. And another technique you can try is playing it faster than it's meant to be played. Try it at 110 beats per minute. Go so fast and don't worry about the mistakes you make. You're just kind of scaring your hands into the thought that, yeah, I might be asked to play at this speed. And when you slow down the performance speed, you're able to do it a little easier. Okay, on to the next measure, measure 106. It sounds like this. So we've seen these chords before. It starts off very similar to the last one. And I should add it this time that he doesn't bend all of these up. Every second measure, he doesn't bend. So there's four of them. The first one, he goes bend. Next one, he just does the E5 chord itself. I tend to bend them all up. Let's agree to bend them all. All right, starts off the same. But we do these chords. Note that slap. We've done these chords before, so I won't go into a lot of detail, but that's the difference between the first measure we looked at and this one, 106. One more time slow. After that, measure 107 sounds like this. That's very different. So we start off with our bend this time. So 
So the big change there is after this part, we do this like that. So uh, we have a little percussive pop, and then we have a bar at the 16th fret, D16, and three strings underneath. And then we come down to the 14th fret, and then we have a little hammer on on the D16. So it's like that. There's a lot of little muted pucks between a lot of these notes. And then we have a muted puck, speaking of, and then this chord shape, and then we repeat that. Then we have the we have the 16th fret, A16 and D16, a little puck, and then A14, and then two strings under that bar, and then our percussive bit. So one more time, slow. Note that slap in its accustomed spot. And then the final measure in that grouping, measure 108, sounds like this. So real slow, the same, starts off the same as the other ones. We have a little muted buck, and then this series of chords. A little muted buck. Pinky is going to go to the B17. Then we're going to, the sounding is the D14. And then we go down, third finger on the B16. And then just the 14th fret bar, we have a slap, and then we go back to that note where that chord with the 16th fret of the B is implicated, and then find a little muted pluck. So slow. And that ends off that part. That's probably the hardest part in the whole song. Measures 109 to 111 sound like this. And then it ends off the little pop on the D14. So what we're doing there is this chord. First finger, D14, barred, and then our third finger is on the B16. Now to get the speed, you can't use your thumb and two fingers which would be nice because your thumb has to pop the open D. So you're gonna have to use your three fingers all hooked together. And then the thumb come, kinda reaches forward and then pops that open D. And then your thumb on your fretting hand comes up to the E12 and then E14, like that. And then we have a little buck and a pop on the open D. So that first measure 109. And then the next measure is very similar. But we throw in this at the end. Like that. So it's like that. And then the final measure is just a repeat of the first one. And then it ends off with a kind of leading in note for the next measure, the uh, D14. So that's all. You might have to practice to get this up to speed, just kind of bounce. Anchor your arm against the body of the guitar. And the other thing is to remember that your thumb is the most uh, logical candidate to do these open Ds. Like that, and then we're into the next measure. Measure 112 is really neat, it's like this. And instead of teaching it note for note, I think we have to rely more on the feel of this, because reaccomplishing what he's done on the recorded track is, is kind of hard, and it's more important to get the overall idea of what he's doing rhythmically. So we're looking at some chords. We have a lead-in note from the last measure, and then we're doing these chords. Like that. We take our first finger and bar it across the 14th fret from the G on down, and our pinky is going to fret the E17. And then we're just going to walk down to the E16. And that's the first chord group. The next one is a little lead-in note on the G14, and then the G14 barred all the way down, 
and we do this chord. Our pinky is on the B17, which is kind of moving it up a string, but our third finger is on the G16. So we're getting these two notes. So, so far. And then after that, it gets a bit simpler. We're just going between the 14th and 16th frets. And the rhythm we're going to do in between, instead of doing that rhythm which he actually repeats here, we're just going to do a, 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 a waka waka. John Mayer is very famous for these like thumb and then up with the finger, down with the thumb, up with the finger. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do four percussive things in between these chord snatches on the way down. And hopefully it'll sound something like this. So you hear all that crazy rhythmic Wooka chucka chucka scratching as you're going down. That's what you're going for instead of exactly what he did. It's more real and it's more feel. So you're gonna just wanna make really small up and down movements between those chords with your hands. Let's try and do it slow. So one, two, three, four. 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 And I find if I bounce my hand up and down off the area right here, it tends to sound pretty good. So coming off that. And there you go. So feel. Starting at measure 113 at the end of the song, it gets kind of funky. bunch of trills but he doesn't really pick them he kind of takes his first finger and strikes them flicks them almost so measure 113 we're doing this kind of shape thumb is over the E14 and then we're doing that this shape here with our first and second finger and the rhythm is so we alternate between the low note and the chord here that's the first rhythm. Can we do a nice pull off? Before going from the E17 to the E14. A little bit of a shaky bend on the on the last one there. So slow. The next measure after that sounds like this. So the, it starts off the same, but then we do two open strings in the middle. So, like that, followed by a slap. Then we come up with the high chord, and then a little puck. So that last, those last three notes, this chord shape here, then the 16th fret double bar here, and then the 17th fret. The way I fret that, I fret it with my first, the first chord with my first finger and second finger, and then my third finger bars the 16th fret stuff, and then my second finger jumps over to do the final E17. Like that. I find it's easier to do that. Like that. And then the next measure after that. I don't like that. Uh, D14, I tend to do a D16 because it matches previous licks we've heard and I think it's a little bit out of context here. You can do what you want. That last measure one more time slow. I'm going to do my way that one. Then we do this nice little chord out here. We're going into the trills. So that, those chords are, they're kind of neat. We're doing a 14th fret bar here. We're going to pluck three strings starting from the D14 down. Then we're going to access the uh, E16. And then we're going to lift the E16 off and make sure that we're ringing that E14. Then we're going to do that E5 chord again with the pinky on the B17. And then we go to the 14th fret bar again. This time we're doing three strings starting with the D14. 
And then we're going to go to the two middle 16th fret fretted strings, and then back to the 14th fret again, what we were doing before. And then ending off with the A16 and the D16 before going into our little trillage here. The uh, flicked trills. So we're trilling basically all the notes in the minor pen, the F sharp minor pentatonic. So we're starting from the A14 to 16, D14 to 16, G14 to 16, and then he actually ends off with a weird kind of uh, kind of off color thing from the 14th fret. He's kind of got the E14 and the B15, and he's kind of trilling like that. But I think you can just get away with doing that pentatonic scale. So let's do that whole sequence slow. this tutorial it was uh, an extra long one to put together and if you stick around I'm going to show you a couple things about how it was filmed how the performance video was filmed as well as my uh, struggles with the outro stuff and the percussive stuff that we had to look at thank you very much catch you later I just want to quickly go over how this was recorded we have this TC Helicon voice live 3 with a custom patch I have the microphone and guitar going into this Bose PA over here, and that's all the live sound you're hearing in the room, and it's recorded at the same time with this uh, handy cam I'm holding, which was popped over here on this tripod on the table. So just one single shot for the whole video that I kind of made interesting by zooming in and moving around and pseudo panning. So we have a three-way lighting system here, shot against a green screen. So it's two green screens paste, placed side by side in the corner of my room here to give myself a lot of room to move around and swap the background. So, and out from there is going to the PA and also into the Shure wireless system, which then transmitted to this belt pack I'm wearing. And if you look in the video, you can kind of see me with these in-ear monitors. And I'm listening not only to the monitor out on this for a bit of guitar and a bit of vocal, but I'm also listening to the backing track, which was playing on this iPad here. So I'm going out an eighth inch jack into one of the channels on the wireless. So I'm listening to all three things, guitar, myself, and the backing track to stay on beat, kind of looking at the camera, keeping myself in frame. And uh, it's recorded all through the camera's built-in mic. There's no other recording you device know, other than that. very live on the floor sounding. You can kind of hear the guitar chord popping around. You hear me stepping on the button the one time for the distortion. And the patch on here, the distortion wasn't the greatest, but the patch is uh, using a swamp tone amp, which didn't sound too bad. Nothing really fancy on it. You gotta watch this thing because it'll make you sound like Kanye West if you're not careful. So, it's uh, very simple, very live, not a lot of room for error. And the vocal and the guitar are mixed the whole time, so you can't really do anything to them. You gotta pre-set them and then hope for the best. Um, simple, not a, room, not a lot of room for error, but uh, it was a good result. So here I'm gonna play the waveform for measure 105, slowed down to 90%. This is right off the live DVD recording, and I want to draw attention to that percussive bit that occurs in the middle and the end of the measure. The four note value percussive bit that sounds in this part like a triplet. 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 So that's what first was a mystery to me. It sounded like a triplet, but the timing was off, like it was a late triplet. Even at 70%. Ba -ta -ta. And 50%, there's still a triplet feel to it. What is late? There's a lateness to it, and we don't know why that lateness is. Well, it's got to be caused by something, and it's actually caused by an extra note off the top. That's the thumb. So 
So right there you heard four. Dun 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 dun. So one, two, three, four, and then it starts over again. So it was only by slowing it to a ridiculously slow speed that we were able to determine that it's uh, four percussive notes instead of three. So we're gonna move the waveform over into measure 106 for some video. All right, so let's look at the video for that. Watch for the slap right here. There's only one slap in each of these measures. And here it is. So whatever he's doing, it does not involve a slap. So that, that was something that um, I had to discount right away. And there's another issue here with his thumb appearing to move upwards right here. See how it goes up and down. So it goes up here. I'm kind of pointing with the mouse. And I thought he was doing an upstroke. But the the up action is just him resetting his thumb to come down on that rake on the E and A strings. So this was a very mysterious thing to figure out. I think what I'm showing in the video it has a high probability of actually being what is what he's doing in this live bit. But like I said in the video, it's something I've never seen him do before. It's quite interesting because it's got that high open D pop to it. And it was very mysterious to figure out. And even when you look at my fingers when I play it, it almost looks like what I'm playing isn't what's coming out. And it's the same with this. It really, we'll just play it one more time on the way out here. Sounds like there's a lot more notes that are coming out than are actually being struck on the guitar. So just another challenge when doing these kinds of things.